Okay, I'm going to go through this tutorial about how to, about how to use uh, the Mix IDE. And hopefully just seeing someone go through it will be helpful. Uh, this is from Gav of york.gitbooks.io. And like it says here, the IDE Mix is intended to help you to create, debug, employ contracts and dApps. And um, there's all things that involves HTML files, JavaScript files, style files, image files. Okay, so the first thing is going to be <clears throat> Obviously, to open it, uh, the project editor, uh, it's an IDE, so as you can see here, I already have it open, it's called Mix here, and the first step you'll do will be to create a new project, so let's just create a new project here, I'll call it um, example, say OK, some files required to be saved, you want to save changes, I'm just going to say no to that. Thing that was uh, open before. Um, it dumped some sample stuff in here, but let's use the stuff from this tutorial instead of the default sample stuff it throws in there. So we have a, let me see. All right, editing backend contract file. By default, new project contains a contract backend deployment on the blockchain. All right, so what I'm going to do, edit the empty default contract, which isn't empty right now because they put a, a nicely put sort of a sample. Let's overwrite that and sort of clean it up. At the same time, I won't actually do what one, one really should do in these situations, which is type out all of the code so you get a better feel for it. But what I will do is um, I did some more of that uh, but in Solidity in my last talk from January. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just clean this up a little bit and go through. Let's just show things that happen if we had like syntax errors, for example. Uh, let's see if we had a bunch of things here. It's going to complain. Um, so as you can see, it's a, uh, let's try to put like misspell mapping. It's going to complain. So it's nice. It's an IDE. You're writing smart contracts using this high-level language, and you're getting feedback about uh, whether it's working or not, so that's all pretty cool. And like it says here, to learn more in detail about what's going on, you can check this little tutorial. But let's just see if we can see what's happening here. Uh, we've got function set rating. It's obviously going to set uh, some sort of rating. It has a key and a value. Ratings key equal value. And uh, we'll get to what some of the other stuff that's going on here is in a second. Um, so we've added, you know, normally obviously you'd sort of develop that, but maybe this is a case where you already, someone already has a contract that you like, and you're going to piece it in here and just sort of check the, the syntax. And you notice a couple things here about it talks about the max execution cost in gas. And so that's helpful and it highlights in red the thing operations that you do that will take the most gas and storage uh, in the blockchain is expensive, so it sort of properly highlights that as um, an uh, expensive operation that can happen in this contract. It's a pretty simple contract, but you can imagine if it got really complicated, it'd be nice to have those sort of heads up on, on the things that would be expensive. Okay, so editing the front end HTML file. So it's an IDE, so this is, you know, the smart contract that will interface more with the actual blockchain but of course uh, dApp a lot of what goes on in it is actually more similar to what uh, web developers are already familiar with again I'll just remove the sample that gets dumped in there and use the sample from this git book and let's just to kind of make it maybe a little bit more clear post in some stuff Yeah, excuse me. Post in the HTML first and uh, the JavaScript in a minute. So let's just obviously in a app you were going to really deploy and everything, you'd probably have it be a little bit prettier, but let's just um well let's see what happens. So I let's refresh it. So this is the this is what it would look like. We've got a Ratings, store, there's ratings, store, this should be key, value, on click will call set rating, which of course I haven't added yet, but uh, query, you can, it'll basically 
get a rating. Okay, so uh, let's. So anyway, that's the sort of the HTML is part of it, and then the JavaScript will obviously be the part of it that is dynamic and can interact with things just like in a sort of more standard web application. So go. Um, let's see what happens if we get errors in here. It doesn't complain. I don't know. Um, but anyway, at least there's a we've got syntax highlighting and all that jazz. Okay. So let's see. We've done that part. Obviously, you could get a lot more complicated, but uh, let's just go with this simple example for now. So now let's. Uh, that's fine. You've you've sort of done this. And if that's all that this did, it may not be super helpful for developing like real <coughs> D apps, but there's a lot more to it. Uh, and we'll start talking, go over that, some of that stuff. Scenarios editor. Scenarios can be used to test and debug contracts. Scenarios effectively a local blockchain where blocks can be mined without proof of work. Otherwise, testing would be quite slow. Scenario. So this is pretty handy. You know, I mean, now you've got a way to test your code. Uh, Without having to do a lot of work, uh, you're going to have a, a local blockchain. You don't, you're not on the test net. You're not on the main Ethereum network. You just, this kind of does some of the grunt work for you to have your own local blockchain that you can set things up the way you want for testing and everything. So like it says, a scenario consists of a series of transactions. Usually a scenario would start with the contract creation. The scenario is the dApp. Addition for the transactions to be added to test and debug the dApp. It can be modified. And so on. So creating and setting up a new scenario. When you launch for the first time, an empty scenario, i.e. not containing any transactions, will be created. Uh, add an account name, my account, set its initial balance. All right, so 20 ether. All right, so let's, you want to do a lot of tests. Edit the Genesis block parameters to your initial account balance of 1,000 ether. So OK. Let's just go through the part we add a new account. So where does it say? Um, File, all right, let's just go get, go here first. All right, what do we have? This will be the transactions, rebuild scenario, add block, new account. So like it said in the tutorial, add an account and let's just give it, I mean, why not give it a bunch of ether? So. And let's just say testing, let's call it testing, I guess. Uh, okay, testing one. I'll just put my initials in there. Test BDG one, so I know it's one that I created and not one that sort of was already there. Okay, this isn't working. Maybe you have to edit the Genesis block first. Uh, nope. Rebuild scenario. And it's starting parameters. Okay. Let's try this. Looks like they've done some of the stuff that's being mentioned in the tutorial already. They have user one, user two, user three, user four, one meter, I guess that's mega ether. I don't even know. Let's uh I'll just leave them all like that. So I guess these are your test accounts. Let's say okay. And uh Change to set your initial account balance 1000 ether, which is basically done. And we'll just rebuild for fun, but it should be fine. Free any transaction. Let's get some ether sent to Bob. And we'll, I guess we'll sort of use, let's create an account. Let's do this. Let's create, let's give them maybe some more creative names. So now we should have users that are like Alice and Bob. Let's rebuild the scenario. Let's see what's in here. We have Alice, we have Bob. Okay. Um, some ether sent to Bob. Create another county Bob with zero ether balance. So, okay. Well, I guess I kind of got ahead of myself there. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's remove Bob from here. 
Okay. All right, so now let us rebuild the scenario. Make sure that Bob's not there. Okay, and we will add a new user, give them no, nothing, and call it Bob. Okay. Mm -hmm. Call Bob too. Maybe it didn't like it. Uh, let's see what's going on. Is it? Uh, Generate a block and see what happens. Bob is still not here. I'm not sure why adding a new user is not working. Well, let's try giving him like one way. No? Okay, so it seems like this is uh, adding the new account. It's not working. Um, let's try this. Maybe it doesn't actually create it until... Okay. Let's just try sending the money. Let's try sending from user1. Send ether to account. I don't have Bob as a option. Let's see, why can we not add a count? Should we add a user? Call me Bob. Three. Copy his address. Okay. All right, so that's not working. <laughs> There's something wrong, and uh, there may be a newer version of this out. I think this version might be a month or two old, but I just didn't want to tempt fate and try to reinstall a newer version. So um, <clears throat> I just was having trouble creating a new account. But what we can do is we'll just add a Bob account to the Genesis block for now and give Bob zero way, which uh, way is, I guess, the smallest unit of possible unit of ether. And um, we'll just do that. Let's see. We can't add it here either. Jeez. All right, let's try this again. Let's just edit starting parameters. Just call user for Bob instead. I don't know why it's having so much trouble letting, <clears throat> trying to let me add somebody. Zero way to, I'll just rename user for, which is sort of edit by default to Bob. And then we will do this, rebuild the scenario. Let's see if we have a Bob user that has no uh, money. Well, at least there's a Bob user, so let's just go with that. All right, so you've got a Bob user. Um, let's get some ethers into Bob. Create another account. Uh, new transaction scenario pink. Like add transaction and send some ether to Bob. Okay, so let us send some. Nice. Here's the new transaction thing. Send some to sender account will be will be Atlas, I guess. Or let's just leave it as user one. And then send ether. Recipient uh, it's going to be Bob. And then uh, we'll just follow what it says in the thing, and we will have 300 because that's what it's used in this example. And then after we do this, we're supposed to add a block. So talks about gas here, which is interesting. Current market is that uh, there's a little bit more insight into what's going on there. Okay. So we have a pending transaction now showing here. Which is basically just all the info that we added. And let's uh, well, this says add block. So here we go. Block two. Let's see what it looks like. You can edit the transaction and see what we from user one two bob three hundred ether gas use input output. You could debug the transaction. Um, so uh, not much to see here, I guess, but that's interesting. 
And uh, so, yeah, it gives you some useful debug type info and some more insight again into what's going on in the blockchain in sort of the sandbox environment. Okay. Um, altering and reusing scenarios. Create a new scenario or start from the scenario. Several transactions you can get first. Rename the scenario, modify the scenario, rebuild the scenario. So, I'm not going to mess with all that right now. So, let's just see if we can. In edit scenario, set current scenario as default and that sort of thing. Uh, I won't mess with that, but interesting. Um, okay, let's keep going through the tutorial here. Display calls. A contract calls a book duplication. This is not a transaction, it's a contract. I cannot change the state. Scenario display calls. Okay, let's just. Seems like they're kind of indicating we should maybe turn that on for debugging. And just one second. The scenario is editor to the state viewer. And uh, like it says, this panel is located below the blockchain panel in the scenario view. So let's just look at what they're talking about. Below the blockchain panel in the scenario view. Not sure exactly what they're talking about. Scenario viewer, I mean, I guess they're, let's see, Windows, okay, state viewer, okay, the, um, Okay, once the blockchain has been run, this panel shows the, the state of the blockchain. So I guess they're talking about this guy here. It shows the blocks. I see we mean all accounts balance. The content of this panel is not static. It depends on selected transaction of the blockchain panel. State shown here is the state resulting, okay, from the execution of the selected transaction. Okay. New scenario, edit, delete, new, reset, save, duplicate. I do not have all these buttons here. And I didn't see all these edit title, delete, new, reset, save, duplicate buttons. Those are basically, I guess they're here. So um, there they are. Uh, okay, good. And um, so when you select a transaction, it shows the state as of that transaction. Okay. All right, so let's just, all right. Okay. All right, so that was the state viewer. I guess we're already kind of looking at that. Um, let's look at the transaction explorer. Using the transaction pane, the transaction pane enables you to explore transaction receipts, including input parameters, return parameters, as well as event logs to display the transaction explorer. Click on the down triangle, which is on the right of each transaction. So I already, I guess, looked at that. You can copy the content of this transaction on the clipboard. You can edit it or debug it. So let's just look at that again. Um, keep going to the wrong window. Okay. I uh, already looked at this a little bit. But here again, we can see they went from user 1 to Bob, 300 ether, gas used. We can copy it. Let's copy it and paste it into a uh, text editor. Uh, so it gives you like a JSON um, uh, info about that transaction. So that's nice. And uh, like it said, you could debug it. There's not much to this one, uh, to this transaction, but uh, it's interesting um, that you can do that with more complex ones. Okay. So kind of went over that. So now you can see it's turning into kind of being, I mean, there is no other, there's no IDE. Um, <clears throat> maybe besides, I haven't really gotten a chance to use it much, but the ALEF zero is discussed in some of the documents similar to this tutorial. Um, so that's another thing to look at, but obviously sort of like your standard IDE that you might use for 
C++ development or just standard JavaScript development or something like that won't have all these tools um, that are blockchain specific. Uh, so pretty handy. Um, Mix exposes the following objects in the global window of contact. Web3, Ethereum JavaScript API. So this is the thing that lets you, the JavaScript code that lets you use your interface with Ethereum blockchain and everything via your JavaScript. And of course, uh, contracts, it exposes. These are all uh, JavaScript objects it exposes, and you can call things on them. Contract, uh, like it says there, which would be created from like web free to add the contract address and the interface. Uh, let's see. Using the JS console, they have transactions in multiple calls. So, in the case of the name of the contract sample, with the function name set, it's possible to make a transaction call call set by writing contracts sample the contract set 14. So it's just basically letting you know that you can do things that you might do when you're debugging stuff like I don't know why my JavaScript console is like looking so weird here. Um, let me see, maybe if I toggle this guy. Hmm. Basically, it's saying, all right, we have like. Uh, you have stuff like this and uh, set rating. You can basically make calls similar to this, but do it right in the right in here. So uh, let's see. Whoa! Did not copy the right thing there. You'd be basically saying you could do something like this. I won't actually do it, but you could do something like like that and put some key. And for debugging purposes and everything, you can do calls right there to uh, to test uh, things out. Okay. Um, all right. Transaction debugger. Makes supports both solidity and assembly level contract code debugging. You can toggle between the two modes. Any excuse points following for available VM stack. You can read more about that in the yellow paper. Call stack, storage, memory, call data, access, and debug mode. Debug transaction, okay. Solidity and EVM debugging mode using the show VM code, okay. Let's see what, uh, what does it say? Debug. Okay, for now we won't, let's try to do a debugging um, of one of these transactions. So the whole point of this simplified uh, sort of toy D app is that <clears throat> the rating data is what will be stored in the blockchain. So you'll have some thing uh, like a key, a name of a movie or someone's name or something and then you'll have a number. and um, see contracts that's their two key all right and uh, so then you'd be able to store it and then you'd be able to ask for the value there so let's try to go debug that uh, here we go JavaScript console transaction debugger all right so we're gonna let's let's do this we're gonna do this and just look at what's going on over here so we're gonna store Let's just put something here like Star Wars. I'm, I'm not even sure if it's going to work. I just I'm give it a rating of 11. And then you notice there's nothing really happening here right now. It said save. We have a pending transaction. Um, see what info we can see about it so far. It uses some gas. It makes a key, uh, like hexadecimal version of Star Wars, sets it to 11. And so this hasn't happened yet, but uh, I guess the idea is that it will if we um, see what happens. We want to edit it. Okay, so it lets us uh, say transact with contract. The contract is called rating zero. Calling the set rating function. Um, we could edit this if we wanted by generating our own hexadecimal value and putting it there, but we're just going to 
He's like, here, and it shows the gas. So let's say, okay, I'm not really, didn't really want to edit it. I just want to see it. <clears throat> um, let's see what happens. Let's just try and debug it first. Maybe you want to, uh, looks like there's not much to debug yet. Let's see what happens if we try it. Not much happens at this level. Let's see the VM. So this VM level, you can see this sort of more detail. This is what's happening in the Ethereum virtual machine. And then as you become an expert uh, um, smart contract author, you will probably you want to worry more about what's going in here. Maybe there are ways to optimize. You don't use as much gas to do some simple things, uh, or maybe it's just you're just setting yourself up for horrible, horrible bugs. But um, all right, so let's. That's cool that we're able to debug it before it ever seems to happen or whatever. Now let's see if we can get that transaction to be included in the block by mining a block. So, okay, so we added the block. I'm not sure why we don't see the thing here. Maybe there's a error or something. I don't know. Let's see what's going on here. Debug the transaction scenario view. Oops. Debug transaction solidity level. Step in forward. Zero. Set rating. Oh, maybe we need to see the. Let's <clears throat> remove the web view. Currently debugging in dot source not available. Let's go here. Let's see what happens if we try to use the debugger of over doing this. It seems like it is. It's, we're seeing it's took it's showing us how much gas it took. It just might be a coloring issue that we're not seeing. It's hard for me to see what line it's supposed to be on. Anyway, but there is not, you know, there's not much going on. But, uh, okay. So, uh, I'm not sure if that's just issues with the highlighting here or what, but uh, certainly interesting. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's just, before we talk about deployment, <clears throat> let's just, finished showing this sort of sort of jumped around a lot but um, let's go back to window show the web view again and let's just instead of setting we already were no we were able to sort of do that transaction uh, let's see if we can uh, get the info from the transaction so um, eleven so there you go if we don't we specify anything other than Star Wars, like if we have Harry Potter or something. But anyway, uh, that's pretty cool. So it uh, keeps checking all everything until you have until you actually type Star Wars. So we'll type Foo. It doesn't get us anything. Star Wars is able to get that info from the local blockchain here. A little bit slow, I guess, because it's um, doing it on every keystroke. But here you go. So it gets the 11. Um, whoa. I guess this is the part where it's showing us stuff that happened in JavaScript but isn't truly part of the blockchain, I guess, just to show us that those calls happen. So here's all these calls. Let me see. User1 readings, dot readings. And it's got the hex, and it shows that at 11. And then here are all the calls. Like every time I was typing a character, it was trying, and it was finding nothing until it tried uh, when it had um, the whole key Star Wars. So I guess that's sort of meant by these are things that are queries that happen against the blockchain at this state. But I guess they're you know they're not things that would actually have to happen in the blockchain. They're just using it as a database. <clears throat> um, okay. So now we've seen sort of the cycle of, you know, of course, the if this were published globally, um, it wouldn't just be you that was able to now, after the reading for Star Wars had been saved, other people would, <clears throat> uh, assuming you hadn't encrypted your 
whatever you were doing in there, uh, other people would be able to find out what your rating of Star Wars was via the blockchain without ever having to sort of talk to you or use a third-party server or something like that. Um, all right, so now let's just quickly see how far we can get on some kind of deployment. Uh, feature allows users to deploy the current project of the DF in the main blockchain. This will deploy contracts to register front-end resources. The deployment process includes three steps. Deploy the contract, package the DF, register. To render the DF, Ethereum browser, Mr. ES0 needs to access this package. This step will register the URL where the resources are stored. Deploy your DF, please follow these instructions. So let's just see what happens. Okay, this is where it starts to get interesting, I guess. Uh, let's see. So where to go? Just grab this info a second. Let's try this deploy, deploy to network, localhost 8545, is that still? Is available. Okay, so I'm just showing how I starting the get testnet with the fast option, which you need to do in your testnet directories need to be empty at first, or else it disables the fast syncing. Um, let's let that keep syncing here. Remove dash wallet open, which they also call mist. Um, and it sort of lets you know that your nodes need to sync with your peers. Um, just gonna let it kind of do its thing. Let's see. Alright, so let's here again. Um select scenario, deploy scenario, deployment account. So let's just uh imagine that before I can successfully deploy, I need to let it at least sync enough. Let's see. So what I'm going to do for now is to just stop this video and if I can get it up and working again later, do that or deploying, actually deploying it can be a topic for, for next time. But uh, let's just go. This is, I mean, let's just mention one thing or just kind of go through a little bit. So you have to deploy the contract, you have to package it, you have to upload and share it somewhere. So this is where some of the marketing sort of materials for Ethereum are a little bit um, they're forward looking because um, right now you kind of have to host it on Pastebin or IPFS or something. There's no really, I mean, some you need some way to host it, and maybe it's uh, arguable that some things like um, IPFS might be a way to do that without a third party. But it's still not it's not trivial to actually host your your D app somewhere. So the files, so the files for your D app, like the stuff that we've been looking at, like, um, <clears throat> you know, let's just cancel this for now. Uh, sort of like whatever your HTML is going to be and everything, 
you know, that isn't stored in the blockchain, which is which is a good thing because it would just be a lot of. I mean, it would get crazy. So you're, you know, the, the, all this HTML and everything uh, in JavaScript. This isn't stored in the blockchain, and so it needs to be stored somewhere else. That and then uh, and then so you can have and then you need some way to like address it. But uh, that's sort of one of the pain points, I guess, right now for actually uh, deploying it. But um, I think it's uh, possible. Just have to try again later when things have synced.